Welcome to the PGF Season 5. This is the Decatur Qualifier. I'm here with Matt Scaff, who is, of course, the voice of the PGF during the regular season, and I'm excited to have him here. I don't, we don't ever get to do commentary together. We both have to do it for different shows at different times, so super happy to have you here, man. Yeah, Brandon, it's, uh, it's really nice to have you on the big show. You know, you've done <laughs> other shows. ADCC, you've done some They're CJJs, okay. but They're you've fun. never done the PGF. And I know you kind of always hop on at the end of the broadcast, but, you know, it's it's nice to, to welcome you to the big time. Yeah, Lindsay's got her dragon boat race today, yeah. so she couldn't be here. That's her, like, big thing. So she's off doing dragon boating, and so it's going to be me and Scaff holding it down for you guys. Here's what we've got. We've got a 185-pound men's bracket. There's six people in the bracket. I'm looking at Josh Gibbs. Y'all know him as full-time. He's coming down to be a part, trying to be a part of PGF Season 5. Sawyer Griffin, who is a purple belt here at 10th Planet Decatur and one of our most tenacious dudes. Talk about Sawyer a little bit. Sawyer is one of the toughest guys. Like, he, he's not an MMA fighter, but he gives you MMA fighter vibes. He trains with the MMA guys for fun. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's a, You know what kind of guy you're walking into right there. <laughs> exactly. He is as tough around as you're going to find. He never stops moving. Sawyer's going to do well today. I do worry a little bit about Sawyer's finishing abilities. I feel like he's got one or two good submissions but he doesn't have the plethora of submissions but strong back player though very strong that's where he's going to look to take most of these matches and talking about the next guy maximus jolly who's one of the most dominant competitors i mean outside of hunter colvin and elijah carlton i mean he, he might, might be, be the most dominant we've ever had in the pga yeah like if we eliminate those two guys i mean what he did in season four was i mean he was the best guy during the season, has a really close match in the semifinals, loses to Dane Leak in overtime, and obviously Reese takes the season, but I mean, he was almost flawless. Problem, though, Max came at season four 155 pounds. This is a 185-pound qualifier. He weighs in at 165 today. You think that's going to be a big factor? It was in the, the last qualifier. We saw him go against Sawyer Griffin and Sawyer – um, kind of bullied him a little bit. And that's what Sawyer's going to have to do, I think, to a couple of these, like Carson Thigpen, Maximus Jolly. He's going to have to get in there, get in their face, use his pace to pass their guard and take their back. But it's worked for him once. We'll see if he can do that again because I know Maximus Jolly, like, he wants that match. He he doesn't care at all. He came here to face Sawyer Griffin. <laughs> for sure. Well, to get there, he's got his first matchup. He's got at Carson Thickpin. Carson comes to us out of the Henzo Gracie in Nashville, and Carson really showed out during the qualifier stretch for season four, which was, again, 155 pounds. He got injured right before the season started, so he had to pull out. We didn't get to see him in the regular season. He's put on the weight. He's here for the 185-pound qualifier. What do you think? Crazy leg locks. It looks strong. It looks really strong. He he walked up, and I could tell he's definitely put on some weight. He's a guy that competes all the time. I mean, Henzo Gracie Nashville has really been uh, spreading themselves. You know, the competition team has been going out, and you see them everywhere, any local comp. I mean, that's how you do it, right? And they're Every run by a genius, Sean Williams. Yes. Yes. Um, and Carson, uh, I, I saw a couple weeks ago, he went and won, uh, like, the Naga, Naga Expert Division, mm -hmm. and he used the PGF – those qualifiers to get better because what's really cool about the pgf qualifiers is you know you're going to get a bunch of matches it's double elimination no matter what yeah and, and so a guy like that is just using this to get the experience he's a guy that's a dark horse today he's definitely not one of my favorite like he's the guy that i'm like what what do, what do ex what are we going to expect from carson yeah. Thigpen? i'm yeah. interested to see how the i mean he's added muscle he's he's big he was cutting he was cutting a lot of weight to make that 55 uh, and he did it multiple times at the qualifiers. But I think this is way closer to his natural weight class. And he looks like he's bumped up and gotten stronger as well. Yeah. So very interested to see how that translates. Just a blue belt, though. That's shocking. Carson, is he's definitely a finisher. Really excited to watch him today. Also excited to see Christopher McConnell. Chris is training out of that Cage Fit Academy down there in Auburn. But he's a brown belt out of 10th Planet Mobile under Bobby Rivers. He's an very active and very successful MMA fighter right now. I believe he's four and one. And I think that he's going to – he's huge, first of all. 
huge, so tall, long, really could have some tools in his arsenal to give everybody some trouble. Played college football in Alabama. That's what you need to know about him as an athlete. And the more jiu-jitsu becomes mainstream, the more we're going to see higher and higher level athletes. Now, he played at South Alabama. So, you know, we're not talking about, you know, Alabama National Championship. Still but South though. Alabama, for you guys that are uninitiated with the Alabama football team, South Alabama is a good football team. Like, if you're playing for them, you you're are. You're playing real football. At, you're playing real. F this isn't your D3 program, you know, in, in the middle of uh, Pennsylvania. Like, this is a good football team. And he's 4-1 and one as an MMA fighter. He's a brown belt, 10th planet style, right, with Bobby Rivers down there. So we know he's going to have some funky offense and just his whole style. I mean, he he says that he's the flippity-bippity-boppity-boo you know, <laughs> guy of jiu-jitsu, which I'm not sure what that means, <laughs> but I'm assuming that means that he's like moves like water and like jello. And so we're probably going to see a lot of turtle guard and a lot of just uh, – you know, he talks about power bottom, the rise of power bottom, Craig's new philosophy. <laughs> so I'm really interested to see his style. And I, that's what I really like about the PGF is seeing – or just jujitsu in general is whenever we get these tournaments uh, together is I don't want to see the same styles. Like we got Carson Thigpen and Maximus Jolly who have similar styles. But now we've got Chris – who's I'm sure going to have a completely different style. Speaking of different styles, we're also looking at David Cooper coming out of that ironclad camp. He did compete in the first PGF qualifier down in Wetumpka. He lost to Sawyer Griffin twice. Sawyer able to take his back and choke him. I believe he took his back and choked him both times. So David, even though he comes out of a tough camp, he's got his hands full here today. Perhaps Sawyer's the favorite based on that. Perhaps we're looking at Chris McConnell. Maybe it's Maximus Jolly, the rock troll. Who knows? But over on the ladies' bracket, we've only got two participants today. We'll go to, through them real quick, name them all for you. Chelsea Sperlin, she trains here at 10th Planet Decatur. And then we've got Darby Jones, and she's coming out of 10th Planet Atlanta, out of that camp, really out of that 10th Planet Gulf Shores camp. Yeah, I, I don't know much about Darby Jones. I feel like I've heard the name before. Obviously, Chelsea trains here. Chelsea um, is a mom. She's always carrying around her three kids. I always find it really cool when the ladies. But she's really, really improving. It looks oh, like she's going to bring some uh, good game today. 100%. All right, guys, it's time to get started with the bracket. We're going to open things off with Darby Jones versus Chelsea Sperlin. These matches are six minutes long. It goes to a judge's decision. Let me tell you who the judges are. Me and my partner, Keelan, we're going to advance the most exciting player if it comes down to it. No points. All subs are legal. The only thing that's against the rules, jumping guard, scissor leg takedowns, and slams of any sort, all subs are legal. we got a six-minute timer, and we are almost ready to go right now. You see in here? Oh, hey, actually, hold on a second, Nick. It's got all of these. Hey, Nick, all of these are going to have a 10-second timer on them. Sorry. Yeah, so watch. we got an eight-second countdown right here. Good Lord. Hold on a second. Sorry. Hey, now I'm taking off the 10-second timer. All right. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. Counting direction career. down. Okay, it's right this time. I'm sorry. That was on me. All right, ready? All right, first match of the day. We got two ladies, so these this is not uh, the only match they'll have, right? It is double elimination, so you'll have to win twice. So we see Darby gets into her closed guard right away, pulls guard on Chelsea. Chelsea's been working a lot on her guard pass. Ooh, look at this. Darby's starting to lock up arms here. Yeah. She, Ooh, she's cutting she's, a good angle. Mm, Chelsea could be in trouble here. Yeah. Chelsea. Oh, she's showing us a lot of resilience. Oh, oh she's going. Oh, my gosh. She's going to get her arm out of there, I think. No. She oh, she had to tap. She made that adjustment at the last second. I yeah. thought Chelsea had bumped her way out of it. Yeah, Chelsea got her shoulder trap, tried to pull out tough. When you get in those closed guard, especially like 10th Planet Atlanta is known for their closed guard. Like, they're known for their bottom games. It's going to be closed guard or leg locks. 
especially from their, their lower belt. All right, give me just a second here to get this bracket updated. I got to get onto this hot spot here. We had some internet trouble earlier, so it's been killing me. Hey, are you a jujitsu dork? Yeah, me too. My name is Brandon McCatherine. I'm a 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu black belt under Eddie Bravo. Here on this channel, you're gonna find all kinds of content. I do one minute Jiu Jitsu hacks. I got full seminars, instructionals, Jiu Jitsu breakdowns. And then every Friday, we do a show called Not The BMAC Show, which that'll make sense. Just watch it, it'll make sense. My goal is to be your Morpheus. You could be Neo. But let me be your Morpheus. Let me pull you up out of the jujitsu matrix and let you see how simple it really all is. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, make sure you leave a comment. I read all the comments. Oh, I love this matchup right here. Right, we have Sawyer versus Josh Gibbs. We didn't really talk much about Josh in the opener. Josh is a PGF fan favorite. Tries a little ankle pick, and Sawyer immediately gets on top, sprawls. And you got to think, he's going to look to spin to the back. For sure. Sawyer, a big-time back player. Mm -hmm. And Josh Gibbs, a full-time player. He came onto the PGF originally as an alternate during – I believe it was season three when he came on as the alternate. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. no. That's two. not right. He was on his season in season two. Oh, Sawyer sitting through for the front headlock. Not there yet. Josh trapping the elbow. Goes for the fat man roll. Sawyer flipping him back over, though. And Josh. <laughs> yeah, I love seeing the guys that are in previous seasons. But it's like a year later, right? And so we get to see their development. Josh has got a tough newcomer, though, in Sawyer Griffin. So if you're in Sawyer's position here, what are you looking to do to advance on there? He makes his move. Yeah, that, oh, he's wow. so good at that. I mean, his back takes are really, really good. Now, he does struggle at times to finish, but <laughs> he's looking good right now. He's got that choking arm across the face. You see Gibbs struggling to get control of the choking arm. It looks like it's a fight for that bottom hook right there. Sawyer does not have that bottom hook. Well, Sawyer's best aspect of his back game is his chair sit. His chair sit is very, very, very good. So even if he can't get this bottom hook and Gibbs starts to get out, we're just going to see Sawyer chair sit, and he's probably going to get that hook on the, the back side. Four minutes, 17 seconds remaining in this opening round of the PGF qualifier. Sawyer Griffin versus Josh Gibbs. The PGF veteran, Josh Gibbs, versus the newcomer. Mm, body triangles in. He's got four minutes to work. Ooh, this Gibbs looks like it's trouble. a big problem. Sawyer's going for it right now. Yeah, this looks – this is deep. Oh, man, putting that squeeze on him. You see him draw that left elbow back. Yeah. Now, this is where Sawyer, he needs a little patience here. Look, he's got it. He, you see, he's, I think he squeezed a little too soon. Just slow. You got three minutes to work. You hear the guys on the sidelines saying, hey, don't burn it up. And I, th I think that was good advice. See, Josh has got his left hand in there, just the fingertips. So he is saving himself. We know Josh is tough. I mean, I, we've yes. seen him Very tough. endure some crazy stuff. The first season he came in during PGF2, he came in at 225 pounds. Oh, my goodness. He forces Sawyer to bail on it. Well, and this is that heartbreaking. Now, how is Sawyer going to react? He thought he had the match won, right? We all did, right? He gets the fully locked in. Renega choke. Gibbs barely has his hand in. You can hear Sawyer breathing from here through the headset. And this is what's tough. A guy like Gibbs has been on defense the whole time, so he hasn't really been working. Sawyer's been the one using his you know, arms, trying to squeeze. And you can hear Ginger, Tyler Sperlin, one of our brown belts over there in the corner with Sawyer, trying to coach him through how to keep that back position. Very nice connection as Josh tried the roll through. 
Yeah, I mean, that was absolutely beautiful. Sawyer looks really fluid with the different leg positionings he's using, too. Yeah, he started off with a single hook, found his body triangle, but you see he can use, and he can play on both sides. He's back to a single hook now. Now he's back to traditional hooks. It's really high-level stuff. Yeah, it's actually really, really good work against a strong brown belt in Gibbs. Yeah, this is much deeper. Sawyer Griffin looking for the finish here against the PGF veteran, Josh yeah. Gibbs, and he's got it. Sawyer Griffin really showing out right there, <laughs> scoring the rear naked choke in dominant fashion. I mean, that's some of the best back play we've seen in PGF history. Uh, that was seriously. phenomenal. It, it was um, very, very high-level work from Sawyer Griffin right there. All right, we're going to move on to our next matchup here. Remember, the PGF brought to you, powered by Subversive. Subversive coming up July the 22nd in San Diego, California. Some great matchups. Gabriel Checo versus Sloan Climber for the heavyweight title. Make sure you tune in on pay-per-view or their live. SubversiveBJJ.com for more information. In the meantime, we're going to kick off Maximus Jolly versus Carson Thigpen, a matchup that I've been super excited to see. Yeah, you have to think there's going to be a, a leg lock. This match is going to come down to leg positioning. You can see Maximus, smallest guy here. Looks like he's about one. Waiting at 165. Okay, it's gonna, that's what I was going to guess. 160, 165. All right, so right away Max gets into his guard. Oh, and he's spinning through immediately. Maximus is a buzzsaw. He is a really good competitor. He's a guy that gets to his A game. Um, oh, my goodness, Max. What, <laughs> what a play to the back. I mean, already on the back position. He's got the traditional hooks in. And I, th I think Carson was expecting a leg game I, I'm, exclusively right there. I'm I, blown away by me that Me too. To I'm the kind back. of in shock. Um, attacks the head, snaps him down, spins to the back. And, and got there through a De La Hiva inversion. Yes. But that's the threat of the leg lock, you know. We saw that with Eddie Cummings, right? Yes. Remember that match with Eddie Cummings where uh, in EBI where the guy literally just showed him it like he just went to his turtle because he didn't want to get leg locked. And we saw Eddie finish with the crucifix. Now, what big differences are you seeing here in the style of back play or the back defense versus what Sawyer in his matchup was doing? Because I can see that he doesn't have the same level of control that Carson has and or against Carson. Yeah, oh, think, twister, though, maybe. I think the big thing is limb length, number one. Sawyer's much longer, so he's just able to use his legs. Um you can see that he, like... Oh, look at this. He may be changing off to a leg lock. He's escaped the back control. He's trying to play for a toe hold. hold. I don't like that toe hold from that it position. It just opens you up yes, too much. Exactly it opens like you this. up for a rear naked choke. And Max is the kind of guy who squeeze your face until the end of time. And he does. Yeah, that toe hold right there, I think, was a big mistake. Yeah, I actually, I totally abandoned that out of my game. Like, because I used to... Uh, it used to be that I would go to the toe hold like during bear and bolo exchanges, but as guys just kept getting better and better at the bear and bolo, it just turns into a total loss for me. So I took that out of my game as well. Interesting that we saw that out of Carson right there. But, you know, Carson's a dangerous leg lock. He may be used to getting that, getting that finish against guys, but, I mean, I think Max would rather die. That's what I was going to say. That's one of those cases where in the gym – you might tap a lot of people right there. But in competition, a lot of guys are going to eat that pop because they see your neck. But it's even a really hard position to get a pop from. This is Christopher McConnell versus Sawyer Griffin. Whoa. Chris is big. Yeah, he is a very tall dude. Very tall, very long. Used to cutting weight to make 185. Made it, came in at 185 on the money. Now, this is a tough match. An MMA fighter, 4-1, brown belt out of 
um, uh, down there with Bobby Rivers, but he's already had a match. Sawyer's already had a match. Now, it only lasted a couple of minutes, but at the same time, oh, me. And we, oh, man, it's getting straight into this dead orchard attack right away. Sawyer has his hands on the chin. Okay, Sawyer. Well, luckily for Sawyer, he trains a lot with Travis, and this is a very similar body type. You know, Travis Thomas, one and of our MMA fighters. similar attacks as well. Exactly. And so he's going to be very comfortable, I think, dealing with the length just because Travis is one of the guys he mainly trains with, and Travis is also 6'4", 6'5". Yeah, and around the same weight class as well, 185 MMA fighter. Yes. But man, I, got I was, body triangle. I know. I was just not expecting him to be so tall when he got out there. Like, man, Gasolier six six one, and he's got. I mean, looks like Chris is about six five. Uh, yeah, he may be. He's very, very tall. Able to lock that body triangle easily around his, around his opponent, around Griffin. Uh, escaping the body triangle from close guard is about impossible. When I'm talking to my athletes, I'm telling them. When we end up in the closed guard, number one, as a competitor, you never want to end up in the closed guard. Why? Because it slows the game down. It slows the game down, and you have no offense. Now, as an MMA fighter, I know the Dagestani guys, they'll do, when they're doing jiu-jitsu, they'll stay in your closed guard the whole time because in MMA, it's a win. That's right. You could, well, and you can just you can strike from within that position. But sub only or jiu-jitsu, like, do not end up in the closed guard. Because now we're looking and we're going to be seeing Chris try all these attacks where Sawyer's just defending. So if it does come down to a decision, it's like, well, I mean, Chris was the, you know, he's the one that was throwing up all the attacks. And he uses the body triangle to pull down Sawyer. Oh, look at that. Sawyer timing it out, waiting on that rubber guard, looking to initiate a pass here. He's going to have to be careful, though. Getting into an over-under pass. And Nice with the cross face, a little elevation. Sawyer got to watch his leg on that back side. He ends up swept. Sawyer's pretty tough. We saw handsome Kevin Sherrill finish him with a leg lock, but that's pretty surprising because Sawyer's pretty tough to in, uh, entangle. Well, it looked like he got a little overexcited and was like rushing up towards that cross face a little bit early. Butterfly guard for Sawyer. He's flat on his back here. What do you think Chris is looking to do? I mean, he's an MMA fighter, so I'm assuming it's oh, – well, but he's hacking the head but ends up on bottom with it. Yeah, that's not what I was expecting. I was not expecting to see the rollover guillotine. Ooh, Sawyer on this chin strap has the underhook as well with his left arm. That's one thing I would say is, like, when guys attack the headlocks – from the butterfly position, if they've got both butterfly hooks in, do not roll over. Definitely not. Like, you're just going to get swept like like Chris did. Oh, Sawyer oh. really committing to this guillotine this here. This is deep. Oh, it's going high, high elbow. elbow. Oh, he's so close. Chris is. Oh, oh he oh. forced a bail. Wow. <laughs> Two and a half minutes left in this one. Barn burner, back and forth. <sighs> MMA fighters, right? Yeah. They're so hard to guillotine. I wonder how much gas Sawyer spent on that guillotine there. Well, we saw him squeeze multiple rear naked chokes. Now we see him get really close with a high elbow guillotine. Can't finish it. you got to wonder about his arms. And is he thinking about attacking the head again? I would like to see Sawyer open his game up a little bit. Ooh, looking yeah. for this hip bump here. Oh, oh, turned like he was going to the arm lock. Ends up in the leg exchange back on top. <laughs> wow. Just as soon as you made the call for it, he was up and gone. Yeah, because in this, you got six minutes. PGF rewards people that open up like this. This is what we want to see. Excellent pass. Griffin now inside control. Good frame on the bottom there by McConnell. What's he got to do to recover this guard or to get back in the game? Man, he doesn't have any frames in, so it's going to be really difficult. He needs to create space between himself and Sawyer. But without the frames, I mean, he's going to have to start turtling up. One minute, 20 seconds left now in this six-minute match. Griffin on the head again. All the way to the mount this time. Arm inside, committing to it. Rolls over. Ooh, what does he need to do deep. to finish that, Scaff? Oh, he gets the oh, tap. Oh, 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 I thought he tapped. Wow. Wait, no, I thought he tapped. 
Sawyer Griffin with a big win, making a huge statement right there. Sawyer Griffin, arm in guillotine, showing a lot of confidence in his guillotine. Pulled guard with it twice. Well, we got to talk about the with the double elimination, you want to be the guy on top of the mountaintop. You want to watch everybody else fight to come face you and have to beat you twice. You're just going to be resting. So this is big for Sawyer. First guy with two wins. He's going to be chilling on the sides for a little bit. He's going to be able to rest up. Uh, he's definitely looking like the favorite right now. All right, guys, we're going to come back in just a second with Carson Thigpen versus David Cooper, and then we're going to get to the ladies' match as well, the second between Darby Jones and Chelsea Sperlin from 10th Planet Decatur. But while we take a little break, why don't you check out this clip of Subversive coming up July the 22nd in San Diego. <laughs> Hey guys, um, you know, I just won the PGF qualifier and now I've qualified for the subversive. Um, dude, that's that's honestly news to me and I'm super excited to get out there. I've uh, watched subversives in the past. I think uh, my teammate, uh, Big Dan Montessoyu, uh he was on the last one and so I'm, I'm super honored to be able to even try out for that event and honestly I'm super pumped for it. So we're ready. Let's go. Alright guys, welcome back. 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Decatur. We're here for the PGF Season 5 Decatur Qualifier. I'm Brandon McCatherine. This is my man Matt Scaff, of course the host of the Grappling Discourse Podcast. You guys already know that. We're about to get back in action here. Carson Thigpen versus David Cooper. And we're looking at Darby Jones versus Chelsea Is this supposed Sperling. to be Maximus? They were asking this. Um... No, this is the way the bracket played it out. So okay. we'll just see how it plays out. Okay. So we'll let the the computer's way smarter at the bracketing than I am, okay. especially for double elimination. So whatever the okay. <laughs> whatever the smooth comp says, that's what we run with. Whenever you guys are ready, there, we'll get this thing going. All right. What are you expecting to see in this matchup? We know Cooper has a pretty good wrestling game. Yeah, he's really, really tough. Um, he's got he's like the old man tough guy, right? Yeah, forty four years old. When I saw how old his kids were, I was like, okay, he's definitely the oldest guy in the bracket today. <laughs> and Thigpen working on a front headlock game versus this quarter guard, pushing him down down into the half. What are we gonna see uh, in response to this half guard? This little crank on the leg from Carson. 
Yeah, if he frees that knee, we might see some back steps, but it looks like he's committed to attacking the head, and I love attacking the head to try and pass, but he's getting a little too high up. He's getting stretched out, maybe getting into an electric chair here, at least oh, in a deep half tight position. trying to turn it into a rolling Kimura, though, and I love that counter to your weight coming up. But and check that out. Still on the Kimura grip, but ends up past Cooper now in the north-south position. Cooper's tough. He's really, really good. And this oh. is his move. He really likes the Darce choke. He's sliding in for that marsh. Yeah. Decided to belt. Just didn't feel like he had it. You can tell that that's his move because he didn't have the posture. And check that out. Weaving the foot through. Attacking the crucifix here. That was a phenomenal setup from the front headlock. Shades of Barrett Yoshida, who, yeah. by the way, you're going to see it subversive on July the 22nd. This is one of your big positions here, Scout. It is, and he's playing it well, but he's losing the ch he's losing the chest back connection, and the big issue was the vertical knees. I tell guys all the time, but he's right into a guillotine. This is very Gary Tonin esque. Very strong front headlock attack, just keeping Carson in a loop here. Yeah. Ooh. Carson able to recover that single butterfly hook, and that's going to be a setup for a lot of these plays. Already thinking about this backside entry. Here it is. Oh, and he gets the immediate tap. And a, a wise choice. Carson has major breaking power right there. Carson, thick pin, gets the win. Man, he was under the heat there for just a little bit, though. Yeah, it, as a competitor, you have to be able to defend, 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 defend right into your offense. The best guys, that's what they do. You give them any, any light, and they're going to be on you. Really nice entry. And we're going to move on to, now we only have two in this ladies bracket. Darby was able to, it's double elimination though. Darby was able to secure a pretty quick arm lock against Chelsea in the first matchup. If Chelsea wins this, they're going to go to a third match. If Darby wins, then the bracket is completed and Darby will get the automatic bid into season five of the PGF. Well, Chelsea has to know, do not end up in the guard. Do not. Right. Go. Yeah, she got pulled right. Uh, Darby came out and just sat straight to her guard last time, got right into her game and able to attack the arm yeah. very quickly. And if she ends up there, posture, right? She tried to pull out with her shoulders concaved and that is the recipe for getting arm barred. Absolutely, especially against these 10th Planet players. Oh. So good with that dead orchard. And Eddie's on this kick right now where dead orchard is the most high percentage best arm lock attack from guard in the history of attacks. And he may not be wrong about that. We see it happen so much now in competition. Now Chelsea pulling in. It's a straight ankle lock from Darby, though. Oh, and a tap. a tap. Man. Under a minute both times. Darby's a killer. Darby is good. I'm telling you, Chelsea uh, is a pretty good player. She's yeah. really improving a lot. And Darby absolutely running through her, picking up two wins. And Darby, <laughs> Darby taking it out on the ref there. She's not quite done. <laughs> she will advance into PGF Season 5. She will be one of the ladies in that 125-pound roster. So big congrats to her. We'll try to get her over here and talk to her yeah. a little bit before we get off the broadcast. But in the meantime, we're looking at Josh Gibbs versus David Cooper coming up next. Have you ever had a feeling that you just couldn't explain? Something that you felt had to be experienced in order to be understood. When the overwhelming noise of society drowns your thoughts, and the constant stress of being connected puts you in despair, and your responsibilities seem like they're never going to end. There is a way of escaping, a way to tune out the world, a way to clear your mind from all those thoughts of uncertainty, a place where the uncontrollables cease to exist, or at least don't matter anymore. There's a way to force you to disconnect from the machine and to live totally in the present, where the act of balance becomes more important than ever before, where every movement requires your senses full attention and where your thoughts are occupied by the moment. A place where a split second 
can mean the difference between success and failure. Some people say this is madness, but this, this is freedom. Hey, are you a jujitsu dork? Yeah, me too. My name's Brandon McCatherine. I'm a 10th planet jujitsu black belt under Eddie Bravo. Here on this channel, you're gonna find all kinds of content. I do one minute jujitsu hacks, I got full seminars, instructionals, jujitsu breakdowns, and then every Friday, we do a show called Not The BMAC Show, which, that'll make sense, just watch it, it'll make sense. My goal is to be your Morpheus. You could be Neo, but let me be your Morpheus. Let me pull you up out of the jujitsu matrix and let you see how simple it really all is. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, Make sure you leave a comment. I read all the comments. All right, welcome back. PGF Season 5 Qualifier here in Decatur, Alabama. I'm Brandon McCatherine, joined by Matt Scaff. Little discrepancy with the bracket. I hit the wrong button. I tried to advance the wrong guy. We got it all squared up, though. No harm, no foul. Somehow, they, we, we almost screwed that one up. And I, by we, I mean me. All right, so the match you've actually got coming up here is going to be Josh Gibbs versus David Cooper. So let's get going on that match. We just concluded our ladies' bracket. Darby taking the double win against Chelsea. Tapped her out twice. And here we go. Josh Gibbs versus David Cooper. Six minutes. Every match is ended by sub so far today. Ah, man, David Cooper was looking amazing until that incredible leg lock entry. But he's on top again, and this is where he does his best work. I don't think I've ever really seen David Cooper play guard. We did see him at uh, the Decatur qualifier last year. He went against Chuck, right? I believe so. I believe it was Chuck Mitchell, the brown belt out of 10th Planet Huntsville. 
and he's uh, he's flattening out, attacking the head, uses it to try to pass. Oh, I think we might have uh, Diesel Squeezel. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Josh using it to turn him. He's got oh, him locked yeah. in there. David, oh. going to be too tough for that. That's just not <laughs> that's not a move. <laughs> God. But we do know for sure that Josh Gibbs has a good Dars. Oh, We've seen him finish people that. with it in PGF yeah. competition. Oh, really nice use of the posture. Oh, and look at that counter by Cooper. Man. That's a spry 44-year-old. And look at this, full Tom Gibbs just calmly pulling him right back down. Same position. He's going to try it again. Cooper utilizing the weave through the legs. What is he looking to do with that? The weave, you're just trying to put weight on that top knee shield. And I think we're going to see him look to attack the head again. He's going to try and, like, cradle. Usually now that's, like, what guys are, are trying to do. I say that, though. Gibbs trying to find himself in a rubber guard position. He's got to be careful of that bottom knee, though. If Cooper can step over, he's in a great passing position. Yeah, he do, and he felt that, decided to bell back towards his Z guard. Yeah, you got to be careful. Everybody's getting so good. From what we've seen with, like, Gordon Ryan just dominating on top, everybody's got that blueprint now. And if you get that bottom knee beat, you got you got four minutes of suffering left. <laughs> that's, that's the game, the inside position. It is. It is. And look at this. Same play again. Diesel Squeezel from the bottom. Yeah, Sam Barboza, we've seen. I know he's gotten one or two finishes um, in the PGF from that Diesel Squeezel. Hunter Colvin, yeah. also very good with that. And look at that. Just both guys spinning around the Kimura. Cooper ends up in the north-south position. Three and a half minutes to go. Gibbs struggling to get to his side. Really good body lock by yeah, Cooper. Yeah, when you've got that body lock from the north-south position. And check this out. Maybe some knee bar style pressure here. Coop able to turn his leg. And look at that sweep. I'm really shocked he was able to pull that off. I mean, the body lock from the north-south position, we saw that a lot from Sean Applegate's team in season three. Gibbs thinking about attacking this Darce again, going back to his... Oh, decides to bail on it. Felt like maybe last time Coop showed him a little too much resilience when in that front headlock. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Cooper's a deep half guy. Look at that. Ankle to ankle, heel to butt, oh, making this switch. Look at that switch. pressure on the knee. The beautiful. Yeah, you have to kind of go oh, over it. Very that. nice counter, though, by Gibbs. Able to flip his hips, get him back over the other way, and he's on the cradle now. Thinking about attacking the leg. Yeah, I think that's a good call. You saw how quick David tapped to Carson. And so, as a competitor, you know, on the sideline, it's okay. If I can get it on a leg, maybe I can get him to get it. Now, Cooper attacking the leg. Uses it to get on top. Two minutes now. Yeah, this is still anybody's anybody's match. They both had good attacks. I think I think Cooper's with the passing has been a little bit more, but at the same time, you know, those diesel squeezel attempts, especially that yes. first one, caused a big reaction. And the Darce attack from mm -hmm. Gibbs as well. I gotta say I'm leaning I'm leaning Gibbs right now. Yeah, it's definitely a really close match. Anybody could still take this in this final a minute thirty. Back in this this weaved position, looking to pass that or trap the hand and turn it into a twister pass. I like that play. Excellent work. Steps out of the half guard. Pass now, looking for the exposure. Yeah, that's a great technical pass right there. Oh, and Gibbs gets on top of it. Cooper sat back. I wonder if something happened there. Or is he just tired? I was gonna say it might be. I mean, 44 with two, you know, two kids. <laughs> Gibbs looking fell to finish over. this match on top. That's going to make a big yeah, statement yeah, to the judges. He fell over a little too easy right there. I think it's I by think the it's judges. I mean me. When it's kind of warm in here too, that takes a lot of people by it surprise does. when they first try. And I think that's a big benefit for Sawyer Oh, look Griffin. at this turning him. Look at this attack sequence by Gibbs here. Well, we definitely know his preferred weapon, it and he's that into that marsh. He's putting the squeeze down on it. David's staying it. pretty wide, though. Yes, gets oh, the arm across. Nice. Excellent. 
But nonstop attack by full time Gibbs. Yeah. Throughout the match. Oh, he's gonna try to flip him into this arm lock. Or maybe just do a very catch wrestling styled Kimura right here. Very Johnny Buck esque. Very Waki Gatami. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right one. <laughs> Now sliding up into a head and arm. Ooh, I'm going to try to close this, and it's not going to happen. All right, that's the end of the match. We go to the judges' decision, and uh, I'm the judges. I will consult with Keelan. We're going to advance Josh Gibbs. So Josh Gibbs wins the decision. Man, really back and forth, though. Yes. Definitely not, you know, an obvious play, but I think with two Darce two Darce attempts, both the pretty diesel decent. Squeezel. Two diesel squeezels, particularly that first one made him turn. Uh Cooper was able to get some good position, but Gibbs able to get some good position too. Yeah. So back and forth. The submission trumps the position in PGF. A good submission. Yes. A good submission. We don't like that spammy stuff. All right, we're looking at Carson Thigpen versus Chris McConnell now up for our next matchup. And I would not count on this one going the full six minutes. These guys look like they both like to get down. Yeah, Carson definitely looking beefier without those weight cuts. So thick pin pulls guard right away. Already oh. attacking the outside heel, and he got the tap. Nine seconds. The fastest submission that I can ever remember in PGF qualifier or otherwise. Carson Thigpen with the big win by submission. Nine seconds to the outside heel hook. That was so Eddie Cummings-esque. And... That's kind of the thing with the MMA fighters. Most of the time, they're not really training those positions as much. And they're ready to tap to a leg lock, too. And especially, he's got a fight coming up. His coach probably said, do, what, do not No matter get hurt. what happens. Tap. <laughs> and don't. no matter what happens, tap early on the leg locks. Good call. Man, nine seconds. Yeah. Nine seconds. That's incredible. The Mantis Travis Thomas making an appearance here. Open mat at Decatur at 1 o'clock, so people are going to start piling in here soon. Next matchup is going to be Sawyer Griffin versus the rock troll Maximus Jolly. And this, as you alluded to earlier, this is actually a rematch between these two guys. They didn't meet at the PGF qualifier, though. It was at a bracket in Wetumpka that Stephen that Stephen Aiken was putting on. Stephen Aiken and, um, and Isaac oh, yeah, Stackhouse were putting you're on. Correct. But uh, Sawyer came into that matchup and able to take him out. Just outlasted the Rock Troll. Yeah, and see, he immediately sets. The Rock Troll says This is going to be high-paced, man. Yeah, and the Rock Troll told me, he said, the big mistake I made was trying to wrestle with Sawyer because Sawyer – Won a wrestling exchange, and that's how he got onto the back. So I knew the Rock Troll was going to sit. He's going to try and get into the legs of Sawyer, which is very, very difficult. And you can see Sawyer's probably got 20 pounds on him. Sawyer's yeah, Sawyer came bigger. in right at 186, so within the, within the limit, but a little bit over the 85. Maximus came in at 165 pounds. And look how Max is using that left side knee shield on the collarbone of Sawyer Griffin. Yeah. Sawyer's got to be really careful with those scoop grips underneath. Max, Max very, very yes. good at that. We saw him use it to great effect I, during season four. I mean, four. in Max's thing, he put been to multiple Craig Jones seminars. <laughs> that was part of his bio. That's part of his bio. You, know? <laughs> so you can imagine. Craig loves that knee shield scoop grip. Those entries, um, and I got to imagine that's what Sawyer's got to be real, real cautious of. And Max doing a good job of keeping Sawyer's weight off of him too, using those frames and sh and shields. Oh, tries to pop a triangle at him. That's a new tool that we haven't seen from Max yet. I would say with Sawyer, if I was 
you know, Coach and Sawyer in this match, I would say keep it high paced. Keep it high paced. Do not let the Rock Troll get comfortable. You're going to be able, I think, to make him wilt. Those guys that are just used to being offensive the entire match, when they're on their back foot, they start to wilt a little bit. And they're on bottom. You know how hard it is to play bottom when a guy's coming at you for six minutes? Very, very difficult. And that's Sawyer Griffin's MO. He is a guy who comes at you for six minutes, and he does it the whole day, too. Yes. Well, his condition, just the way he trains. He's one of those guys, like, I don't know how much conditioning he does outside of training, but when he trains, he's, he's getting a workout. Yes. yes. <laughs> Believe me, trying to roll and train with Sawyer is I know, I saw the other day you were work. like, hey, you want to warm up with me? And there was nothing warm up about it, you know, maybe <laughs> the first 30 seconds. And that's just Sawyer, though, and that's what you love about him, and that's why he's such a good competitor. Saw you're getting heavy on those hips, but allowing a bit of a scoop here from the rock troll. Oh, nice. That's what I said. Scrambles, though. He just, he's so good at freeing the knee line. And he does it kind of awkwardly, too. He just kind of retracts his knee, and it just, his legs kind of slip out of there. Both these guys really young. Sawyer, I believe Sawyer's 21. Is that right? Mm hmm. And then how old is Max? Like 21. Yeah, right around the same age. Both looking to make a splash with PGF Season 5. Yeah. Two minutes, 50 seconds to go. Yeah, um, Max with the only two attacks. You see Sawyer try to do a rollover guillotine. But again, when both butterfly hooks are involved, that's, I mean, pretty much you're just going to get rolled over. And Max has made attacks, but they really, each of his attacks has kind of left him in a, a slightly worse position during the past. So I feel like Sawyer is kind of creeping ahead of him during those I, exchanges. Yeah. And I would say this if I was Sawyer. I would attack and pass this side. It looks like Max doesn't have as many weapons on this side of his guard. The side on, they're playing now. Yes, on the strong side, when Max is laying on his right hip, that's where a lot of his like best attacks are. He just doesn't look as comfortable on this side. He wants to be on this side. And if yeah. I was the coach, I'd be like, no, 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 we're going to keep dragging him this oh, way. Max pulls up to try to wrestle. Wanted to Iminari oh. roll. Might have made a mistake there. He, nice he's got pummels. Sawyer chasing him that's side to side. Wow, nice recovery by Max. Sawyer had him under some heat there. Yeah, really nice leg pummeling. Minute 40 to go. Tightly contested. Yeah. yeah. But I'd say it's really been Sawyer dictating the ter the pace and the terms of the match. It's still anybody's, you know. It's just going to be one moment. One moment is going to take this match. And here's a scoop grip. This could be this could a be good that moment. Entry. If he can make a strong <laughs> attack right here. This could be that moment. Oh, he's got him laced up. Trying to isolate a leg. One minute exactly to go. All the way into position now. So he's got to be careful here. Yeah, Max is Getting a breaker, double man. trouble. Max is a leg breaker. Well, he's definitely put himself in front of the, the match at this point. Yes, that's what I said. It was just one moment, and almost right as I say it, gets that scoop grip. I knew it's the scoop grip. He loves that scoop grip. 30 seconds. Saw you're trying to weave his way out of there, but, man, Max is gripping and positioning looking very, very strong. So you're good at escaping this position. So we've seen Max here many times in the PGF. We know that he's a breaker. Oh, here comes the exposure. And there's yeah. the tap with 10 seconds left. Wow. Max Jolly wins by submission and advances. And I'm going to go back. I want to have a look at the bracket here before we move on. We know we got Josh Gibbs versus Carson Thigpen coming up next. But let's go take a look at the bracket. Max is sitting in the final right now. No losses. So he, even if somebody were to beat him in that final, they're going to have to beat him again. 
because you have to lose twice at the qualifiers to get put out. Over on this side, down in the loser's bracket, or we'll call it the consolation bracket, Josh Gibbs and Carson Thigpen. We're about to see them match up. The winner of this one will meet Sawyer Griffin to determine who advances to see Max in the final. So let's get back to the action. We got Thigpen coming up against full-time Josh Gibbs, and I'm ready when you are. PGF powered by Subversive. Subversive coming up in San Diego, July the 22nd. Get your tickets at SubversiveBJJ.com. So, Big Pin losing to Maximus and Josh Gibbs losing to Sawyer. This is a match, though, where... Oh, man, here comes the big entry from Big Pin already. Oh. <laughs> another quick, it's going to be another quick submission. He's going for the clover leaf. Yeah, no, he got the tap. It was just a heel oh thing. my goodness, twenty seconds. Carson Thigpen again. Man, he continues to just make a splash yeah. here at these qualifiers. I, I wouldn't mind seeing like because he got overwhelmed in that match with Max. He was not ready for Maximus's pace in that first matchup. First match of the day, just was not ready for the overwhelming attack style of Maximus Jolly. But we're going to see Sawyer Griffin versus Carson Thigman to see who's got one more shot at the Rock Troll. <laughs> the Rock Troll coming in as the smallest competitor. I mean, at this point, he's really becoming a PGF legend. Think about it. His no, Chattanooga seriously. qualifier literally just wiped out everybody. I remember everybody was just like, did you see that, that rock Who troll is guy? that kid? Who is that? Then he jumps on, <laughs> and we'd find out he's a fantastically hilarious interview. Yes. If you haven't got to see any of the rock troll on any of the PGF Season 4 qualifiers or any of the stuff that came out during PGF Season 4, He's just one of the most adorable people of all time. <laughs> and he's a straight assassin. Yeah. Well, we're going to get back to it here in just a second. PGF Season 5 Decatur Qualifier, powered by Subversive. We're coming back in just a few minutes with Carson Thigpen versus Sawyer Griffin to determine who faces Max Jolly in the finals in the men's 185-pound bracket. We'll see you in just a second. <laughs> Hey guys, um, you know, I just won the PGF qualifier and now I've qualified for the Subversive. Um, dude, that's that's honestly news to me and I'm super excited to get out there. I've uh, watched Subversives in the past. I think uh, my teammate, uh, Big Dan Montessoyu, uh he was on the last one and so I'm, I'm super honored to be able to even try out for that event and honestly I'm super pumped for it. So we're ready. Let's go.
Have you ever had a feeling that you just couldn't explain? Something that you felt had to be experienced in order to be understood. When the overwhelming noise of society drowns your thoughts and the constant stress of being connected puts you in despair, and your responsibilities seem like they're never going to end. There is a way of escaping, a way to tune out the world, a way to clear your mind from all those thoughts of uncertainty. A place where the uncontrollables cease to exist, or at least don't matter anymore. There's a way to force you to disconnect from the machine and to live totally in the present, where the act of balance becomes more important than ever before, where every movement requires your senses full attention and where your thoughts are occupied by the moment. A place where a split second can mean the difference between success and failure. Some people say this is madness, but this, this is freedom. Hey, are you a jujitsu dork? Yeah, me too. My name is Brandon McCatherine. I'm a 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu black belt under Eddie Bravo. Here on this channel, you're gonna find all kinds of content. I do one minute Jiu Jitsu hacks. I got full seminars, instructionals, Jiu Jitsu breakdowns. And then every Friday, we do a show called Not The BMAC Show, which that'll make sense. Just watch it, it'll make sense. My goal is to be your Morpheus. You could be Neo but let me be your Morpheus. Let me pull you up out of the Jiu Jitsu matrix and let you see how simple it really all is. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, make sure you leave a comment. I read all the comments. Listen, you trying to get into the and jump into the... PGF. If you're already competing, jump into the PGF. This way. Oh, shout out to the people the Out here at the PGF, Decatur, Alabama. Gang it. Day one, massive success. We got a tie between Ironclad and such and such, so the team points are super tight. A couple of standouts uh, from the guys, Manning Leverett and Dane Leak, both looking incredible. Max and this Jolly took four guys off the board. With the ladies, we got a clear standout in Micaiah Jackson. And I feel like it was just a giant success, man. I couldn't be happy with it. down to the final three. So this has been a double elimination tournament. We have three men left. We have our undefeated fighter, who we just saw, Maximus the Rock Troll Jolly, who has really just torn through the competition. Beat Carson Thigpen, just really overwhelmed him. And then in this last match against Sawyer Griffin, really competitive match until 
So Until it wasn't. Let him get that scoop grip too deep. Beautiful sweep into the inside heel hook position. And he just looked like he had a trap that nobody was going to escape. I I've been in and I felt his leg locks. His legs are so strong. Like his positionings are, are terrifyingly strong. And we've seen that in the PGF. Like nobody's escaped Maximus when they've when they've got on the when yeah. he's got on the legs. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think we saw anybody escape a full entanglement with him. Yeah. He was finishing people left and right during season four, just really stamping his name onto the southeastern competition scene. Right now, we're getting ready for Carson Thigpen versus Sawyer Griffin. The winner of this match, they've both got a loss already in the bracket. Both lost to Max. Yep. The winner of this match advances to face Max. In the final, they'll have to, whichever guy it is, they'll have to beat Maximus twice. Max has no losses on the day, and, yeah. It's really tough. We haven't seen in any of the qualifiers somebody come back and win twice. I can't recall that happening yet. It would be really cool. I mean, it's obviously going to happen one day because that's just the nature of the beast, right? It's the day of the day. Do you think oh. either of these guys – because you, you say – with the way that the matchup went, that you think Figpen has more in the tank for him? Yeah, I, I think that's like a lot of guys just in their first match, they're a little bit slow. Um, and you could kind of see his pacing was off. His pacing wasn't right. I mean, if he comes out with the same energy against Max, he's going to get beat the same way. You cannot come out there and but let Max. he came Max out quick in his last two. That's what I'm saying. So I think that was probably the wake-up call he Nine-second submission in a second match. Yeah. Okay. Fastest that I can ever remember in PGF history. And then the next one was what, like 16 seconds? I mean, it wasn't. It was 30, yeah. It was 30, 30 I mean, it, it was under, well under a minute. So, yeah, I think that was the wake-up call he needed. So we'll see. I mean, I, I think either one of these guys is going to give Max a good match. And, I mean, Sawyer can beat Max. He's already done it. He's Renee Kachokta. Carson, I'm not so sure just because of how the first match went, but I do think he has a lot more in the tank. So you're expecting something good if Carson advances. What about this Thigpen versus Griffin matchup here? Styles make matchups, and these guys couldn't be any more different. Sawyer's trying to play on top. He's been attacking the head and the back all day. Carson, it's that inside entry. It's the same entry that we just saw Max hit on Sawyer. Like, that's his go-to. He's going to look for that backside entry into the saddle position. And it's really going to come down to if Sawyer can pass the guard. If he can pass the guard and deal with the leg entanglements, he wins. But if Carson can – get those off balances and really get the inversion because both of them were kind of that tornado style cyborgish where it's like he's inverted all the way under he's using his hamstring to get that elevation yeah. and then hitting that back step so if he can stop the inversions i think he will i think we're going to see sawyer versus um maximus in the finals Keys to victory for Griffin besides stopping that. What are his offensive keys to victory? He's got he's to create a scramble. He's best in the scrambles. When he can't, like in the first match, that back take he hit. Beautiful. His back takes off the scrambles are, and even just like his head attacks, like everything yeah, is Yeah, had a nice based. arm and guillotine finish yes. against McConnell. Yeah, but it's scrambles. He has to create. With Max, he couldn't create any scrambles. He was trying to work side to side, but he just couldn't get past the legs. It was that everything. shielding game yes. of of Max the Rock Troll. Yes. Really kept Sawyer from being able to distribute his weight in a meaningful way. All right. I think we're ready to get started here. Sawyer Griffin on the mat already, awaiting Carson Thigpen now as he approaches. It's a six-minute matchup. All subs are legal. If it goes to a ref's decision, we advance the more exciting fighter. PGF Season 4 superstar Nick Soff is the referee today. And Thigpen pulls guard right away. Yeah, see, I don't. Oh, wow. I don't like Thigpen's initial energies. Like, it's just, just too a little too relaxed. relaxed. It's just too relaxed, especially against a guy like Sawyer and the Rock Troll. Like, Rock Troll and Sawyer have the same energy. Sawyer trying to get busy on this head attack right away. Because, you know, you six minutes, and it's, you know how hard it is to work out of a, of a person's offensive flow. It's just, it's well, really Especially difficult. a guy who keeps a pace the way that Sawyer Griffin does. Yeah. Saw you're keeping some weight on the head, staying on this attack. 
but he's just scoring blows. Like every second he stays in these attacking positions, it's going to be harder and harder for Thigpen to dig himself out. So if it does come down, because you know how it is when you get close to the final, all these Here's the attack on the close. back, and again, another phenomenal back take. Sawyer Griffin right into the body triangle. Oh. He's getting offensive. Sawyer's back takes are incredible. Beautiful job clearing the hand. He's trying to get this lock. His own wrist in the way just a little bit. Didn't feel like he could move his head to make the punch well, all the way the through. The bigger question for Thickman is he even going to be able to escape with the control we've seen from Sawyer? Here, Sawyer going belly down, giving a little d -Sev style pressure and back into the underhook on the bottom side, creating a good angle here. Four and a half minutes to work, too, and... Body triangle is out, switches sides with it, though. It's his leg dexterity. This is way he can use Ooh, his Oh, and there comes the big squeeze now, possibly, from Griffin. Elbow's a little high. Yeah, the elbow is a little high. <laughs> yeah, you hear Travis on the side saying, get that left elbow down. Let's get those elbows down, squeeze them together, use your chest. Ooh, it's a nice oh, compression here. I think here. he's got this. He's going to get it. Yeah. Tap. Carson Thigpen goes down. Via rear naked choke, Sawyer Griffin with another big win. I mean, regardless of how the finals go, Sawyer's had a phenomenal day. Beat two brown belts and then a really tough Carson Thigpen. All submissions, too. He, he, looks, he looks PGF ready. Absolutely. He looks PGF Absolutely. ready. And Thigpen hot and cold today. Two great matches, two matches he's going to be really upset but about when he goes and looks. I'll just tell him it's the pacing. It's the same thing. He just looked asleep. And, I mean, that pass was just too easy. I mean, you allow a guy that deep. Like, you cannot what, you cannot allow. The higher you get, you cannot allow a good guy to pass your guard. For sure. If a good guy passes your guard, you let Gordon Ryan pass your guard, I, I mean, you just lose. You let Ethan, you let any of these guys pass your guard. And so that's what I would say. It's like you just you got to have a little bit more. Um, oomph. Needs a little oomph. Yes. Just a little oomph. We did, the gripping. There's just no gripping in the beginning. It's like if you're losing all the grips in the beginning, it's going to be really tough to crawl, crawl your way back into the game. Especially against a guy who keeps a pace the way that Sawyer yes. does. You know, I, I can't imagine having to fight like Sawyer being on my back and I look at the clock and there's still four minutes left on the clock. Oh, man. That's Dude. a terrible experience. Anytime I watch these things, I always go, thank God I don't compete anymore. <laughs> Me too, dude. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be nothing. sitting around or I'll, I'll have a great day at training. I'll be like, ooh, you boys still got it. I literally never think that. I literally never think that. <laughs> and then but when I watch it, I also yes, go, always. never. I'm so glad I don't have Maximus Jelly trying to break my leg or something. Oh, or trying my to God, yeah. Pass my guard and choke me out. But I'm glad they're doing it. <laughs> Put the gladiators out there for us. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're coming back. With the final, Maximus the Rock Troll Jolly versus Sawyer Griffin. Sawyer's going to have to win twice. Max only has to win once. We'll be back with the PGF Season 5 Decatur Qualifier in just a second. Try to get into competing, jump into the PGF. If you already competing, jump into the PGF. This is the way. Oh, shout out to the Out here at the PGF, Indicator, Alabama. Gang it.
Hey guys, um, you know, I just won the PGF qualifier and now I've qualified for the subversive. Uh, dude, that's that's honestly news to me and I'm super excited to get out there. I've uh, watched subversives in the past. I think uh, my teammate, uh, Big Dan Montessoyu, uh, he was on the last one and so I'm, I'm super honored to be able to even try out for that event and honestly I'm super pumped for it. So I'm ready. Let's go. Hey, are you a jujitsu dork? Yeah, me too. My name is Brandon McCatherine. I'm a 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu black belt under Eddie Bravo. Here on this channel, you're going to find all kinds of content. I do one minute Jiu Jitsu hacks, I got full seminars, instructionals, Jiu Jitsu breakdowns, and then every Friday we do a show called Not the BMAC Show, which that'll make sense. Just watch it, it'll make sense. My goal is to be your Morpheus. You can be Neo. But let me be your Morpheus. Let me pull you up out of the jujitsu matrix and let you see how simple it really all is. Have you ever had a feeling that you just couldn't explain? Something that you felt had to be experienced in order to be understood. When the overwhelming noise of society drowns your thoughts and the constant stress of being connected puts you in despair, and your responsibilities seem like they're never going to end. There is a way of escaping, a way to tune out the world, a way to clear your mind from all those thoughts of uncertainty. A place where the uncontrollables cease to exist, or at least don't matter anymore. There's a way to force you to disconnect from the machine and to live totally in the present, where the act of balance becomes more important than ever before, where every movement requires your senses full attention and where your thoughts are occupied by the moment. A place where a split second can mean the difference between success and failure. Some people say this is madness, but this, this is freedom. Welcome back to the PGF Season 5 Qualifier here in Decatur, Alabama. I'm Brandon McCatherin, joined by Matt Scaff. We're getting ready for the finals. It's a double elimination bracket. Maximus won all his matches on his way here to the final. Sawyer dominated all of his matches except his one match against Max Jolly. He'll have to beat Max twice here. Max just has to win once. We're ready to get started. Whenever you guys are ready, let's kick it off. Yeah, it's a tall task for Sawyer. I mean, any time you got to beat somebody twice, back-to-back, back, and they've already got a victory over you that day. But these guys are one and one now in competition. Yes, and the first time they met up uh, just a few months ago. Oh, Max shooting a triangle. Tap! Quick! Oh, 11 seconds. Man. Maximus Jolly with the powerful break on the arm. And let's check on Sawyer, make sure he's okay. He snaps that elbow out. Yeah. 11 seconds, Maximus Jolly with the big win. Congratulations to him. Wins PGF qualifier for the second time. Season four, dominated. Season five at 185 pounds, outweighed by 20 pounds, comes in, dominates again. Yeah, I, and I think that was just with the, hey, don't get – Leg locked. And just so left his just weight in too was, much. He just, he was too far like this, shoulders in. When you stay compact like that, it just leaves you open to so many other submissions. And Maximus is, ah, he's a breaker, he's man. He's a master submission he's artist. He's a breaker, man. He, he just arms, legs, more. It does not matter what it is. He's a stud. Wow. Maximus Jolly 
with the dominant performance today. All submissions at the PGF Season 5 Qualifier. PGF, of course, powered by Subversive. Subversive coming up July the 22nd in San Diego. You can get pay-per-view information or tickets at SubversiveBJJ.com. We're going to try to get a couple of these athletes over here to talk to Scaff. In the meantime, you guys just hang out right here for a second, and we'll start bringing these guys on for interviews. Yeah, so getting ready to interview a couple of these guys. Really talent-filled day. Six guys, a um, couple of PGF vets, a couple of newcomers. I think uh, – oh, yeah, jump on. All right, introduce yourself to the people. We got the female champ here. Introduce yourself and tell us about your day. Hey, I'm Darby Jones. I train at 10th Planet Gold Shores under Josh Yelverton and Sean Applegate in Atlanta. Um, yeah, today went better than expected. <laughs> I made weight. I got subs pretty quick, and it was a good day. Yeah, you, I mean, you had a dream day. I mean, when you come out, and anytime you're finishing your matches in under a minute, you have two against Chelsea, who – Chelsea, you know, she's a tough blue ball. She's been training a long time. She trained a bunch in Denver. Now she's, you know, she's been here the past couple of months – immediately you pull guard in both your matches. It's kind of the 10th the planet Atlanta Gulf Shore style, right? Like it's going to be a closed guard or leg locks. And you showcased both at a very Thank high you. level. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you showcased both at a very high level. So talk to us about that first submission. I really want to talk about that that closed guard okay, submission. Okay, so um, I was planning to go rubber guard. I've been playing a lot with uh, Lachlan Giles Choi Bar, so I was hoping to – either go for a go-go or my choy bar I've been hitting. And uh, I went to a Ben Eddy seminar, and he taught, like, a dead orchard for short people. So <laughs> I uh, locked that up, and then I found my arm bar when she went to slam me. It was just right there. So Yeah. <laughs> That's funny you say that because – Shorter limbed, I'm longer torso, shorter limbed, and so the dead orchard has always eluded me. So I could definitely use some of those tips that, that you <laughs> used there today. But I, I think the closed guard is a competitor. It, it's such a good position to be in because you control the pace of the match and you have all the offense and they don't have any offense. So is that a spot you're always trying to kind of get to to get comfortable in your matches? or You know, at White Belt, I played it a lot. I did train at a key school before 10th Planet for a couple of years, and I played close guard a lot. I kind of veered away from it, it trying to work on my passing and my leg lock. So now that I've been working on rubber guard, I've been reintroducing it back into my game. So last season, we saw a very stacked females division. I mean, one of the most stacked female divisions you're going to find uh, across the country when I mean, we had – a silver medalist, ADCC silver medalist. We had um, multiple brown and black belts, people competing at the highest stage. So when you look at that talent-rich division, um, and this season's 10 pounds lighter, so it's going to be a 125 pound, but I'm assuming we're going to see some, some similar faces and similar talent. How do you feel like your game's going to stack up? And what are you looking forward to most competing in this next season of the um, PGF? What I like about PGF is how many matches each competitor gets. I like that a lot. So if you lose one, you're not out. You get to keep going and try to get points, I think, mm -hmm. um, for your team. So I like that a lot. I'm looking forward to the experience, testing my cardio, testing my skill against these high-level females, and I'm stoked. Yeah. Um, that's, what, that's what I always really like because sometimes you go out there, you have a match like Carson Thigpen today. You know, he went out and lost to Maximus really quick, but then he had two phenomenal subs. Yeah. You know, so you really get to see and kind of learn about the competitor throughout the competition. You get the chance to showcase. So there's so many people on the first day of the PGF, they don't win a match. And then day two comes, and they high, they get three highlights. And I think that's something that's really special yeah. about the PGF. Yeah, Friday's pretty cool. I'm excited for this summer or fall, It's right? going to be fall. It's going to okay, be right around okay. Halloween. So last question I got for you. So thinking about – how your game needs to develop. And really, it's the physical challenge of the PGF. You see it every season. Somebody's going to get popped. Somebody's going to get a little injured. you got all these matches. I mean, I think the females last time had, what was it, 12 matches? Yeah, I think it was 12. I mean, that's 12 matches over three days. That's yeah. a lot of that's matches. Lot. So how are you going to be training for that? Well, I'm definitely working on my cardio for sure. I'm already doing strength and conditioning, so my endurance is better. I'm just not wall sitting at all in the room. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> no wall sitting. <laughs> Amen. Well, Darby, 
it was a pleasure to watch you compete today. Um, I love these these qualifiers because it gets the people a chance to kind of see who's on the up and coming. And because uh, honestly, whenever we have these qualifiers, like people are starting to kind of see the PGF is a grueling, grueling tournament. And so anybody that even just shows up to this, we know you're about it and you're about it today. Thank so congratulations. You. We will see you in around uh, around Halloween. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, there was our female winner. I'm excited to see Darby. She showed a case, you know, two different submissions. Looked really, really good. But I'm joined by a fan favorite here, full-time Josh Gibbs. Josh, um, not your day today, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. showcased some really good attacks. You had some really cool, uh, like, diesel squeezel attempts from the bottom position, very Hunter Colvin-esque. <laughs> but talk about how you've been and it really uh, – Trying to get into this next season, 185 pounds. What yep. would it mean to you to be in season five of the PGA? I'd love to be in season five. Um, I get. I mean, in all honesty, it'd probably be this. Is probably the last season I could ever try to do, just because where I'm in my life, and um, you know, I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be. I'm 35. I'll turn 36 in July. So I'd really love to be on this last season. Um, didn't like you said, didn't go my way. I was hoping to have a better showing uh, for today. So looks like I'll have to come back to the other qualifiers and what we got one in Nashville and one in Jacksonville in August so yeah there's still a couple more chances and mm -hmm. that's what I always love about it about the PGF qualifiers and I know last season there was a lot more qualifiers mm -hmm. but there's still opportunities mm -hmm. so whenever you're thinking about getting ready for these qualifiers like there's always the sense of unknown there's mm -hmm. always competitors today I saw your Griffin who's never competed in the PGF but I mean, he's tough as nails. Oh, yeah. He's your first match. Yep. How do you, how do you get ready for just kind of the unknown of these qualifiers? Uh, one thing that's actually been really cool, um, back in Lynchburg where we're from, one of our gyms, um, BJJ 1441, that the Heroes so home, we've been having a great open mat every mm. Thursday um, at 3.30. And we thankfully, at, we have a representative from, like, every school in the area. And sometimes we have different people coming in. So that's kind of helps with the unknown. I'm not seeing the same people every single day at my school, you know, at least once a week, I'm getting different people, different looks. I have to react to their styles and their game. So I think that's been helpful. Um, and then you just kind of have to, you know, do the best you can to play your own game when you come out here. Like I said, it didn't quite go go my way today. Um, but, yeah, and just, just remember, have fun. We're out here to get better. Um, yeah, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. And you have a six-minute match with, mm -hmm. with Cooper, right? And he's yeah. a tough yeah. old son of a gun. He I mean, is. he is. He is a very tough competitor. Mm -hmm. He's a guy I've seen in the Southeast mm -hmm. competing for the past few years. And every single time, he brings a pace about him and a toughness about him. And you have some really good attacks in there. Mm -hmm. What is, like, one takeaway from that match that you feel like you can get better from? Because I think sometimes, like, you know, your master's Carson. You know, he mm -hmm. gets on your legs pretty quickly. <laughs> There's not a lot to take away. But a match like that, those six-minute grueling matches, mm -hmm. I think can really propel somebody to that next level. Mm -hmm. So what's your takeaway that, from that Cooper uh, match? I need, to get, I need to not stay on the bottom as much. I need to get better at getting up, getting on top, um, getting those attacks working. You know, I sometimes I can get a little too comfortable, I think, in, like, half guard. Um, so with that, yeah, I should have been better at trying to get up, get on top of them. Um, and then just maybe try to – Probably should have tried to get to mount a little bit more, try some attacks from mount. Um, I know sometimes with, with big leg lockers, that's maybe not the smartest thing because they, they can elevate, but uh, he didn't seem to be you know big into leg lock. So I think that probably should have been a better strategy of mine, really pass, get out of the top half, and advance to mount. So I think strategy-wise, yeah, that's something I, sh I need to do a little bit better at. Well, Josh, it's always a pleasure having you around. You're two-time veteran in the PGF, your guy looking to try and make season five of the PGF. Do you have any final thoughts before you get out of here? Man, like, if you're watching and you're anywhere near, you know, Nashville or Jacksonville, you guys should be coming out and competing. You know, there's there's got there's tons of more 185ers out there than what we just saw today, what we saw at the previous qualifier. So, like, you know, show up. This is a great experience. It's, you know, going to put you out there. It's going to test you. And if you're looking to build a career in jiu-jitsu, I mean, it's, it's going to be streamed live on YouTube. You know, it's only growing. It's on Brandon's channel. I mean, you guys here at Decatur have been doing great, putting out content. So, man, show up. That's always my message. Show up. Just go for it. Well, Josh, it's a pleasure seeing you again, brother. Appreciate it, Matt.
Thank you. All right, I'm about to be joined by Carson Thigpen, the blue belt, the lowest ranking guy, but the two fastest submissions of the day. I mean, he looked, well, I take that back because in the finals we saw Sawyer get tapped by that arm bar by old Maximus Jolly. But I'm joined by Carson Thigpen out of Henzo, Nashville. How's it going, Matt? He is a blue belt, and he's a guy definitely to look out for. He's competing all the time. I feel like any time there's something going on in the southeast, you see his name pop up. Two and two today, so mixed results. Yeah, yeah. Two really nice leg lock entries and then two matches, um, you know, where you got beat pretty quickly. But at the same time, like, this is about making highlights and making a name for yourself. And as a blue belt, you're doing that because every time you compete, you, you're walking away with at least one highlight. Yeah. So talk about your day today. Um, I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I felt a little pitiful from the back control and a little pitiful from uh, Turtle. I think I let those guys uh, get a little bit too much control on me, and uh, I, I was just late on my escapes. I know uh, in the first match against Maximus, I went for a silly toe hold, which got me brought right back into that um, – into that back control, and then the strangle obviously came right in soon after. Uh, so I'm a little disappointed with the silly little mistakes and just being a little lackadaisical. But um, I'm, I'm trying to be nice to myself because I am still coming off of surgery. Like, I've only been uh, full-time training active for, like, the last two months. I think I got cleared in March, towards the end of March. Um, so, yeah, grade three uh, AC joint separation took me out last season. Uh, labrum was torn as well. So had that all fixed up. Luckily, the recovery process went really well. So... I'm back in there, back on the mats, back in these competitions. I'm going to be probably the most active competitor out of our gym again this year. Even uh, I was probably the most competitive last year, or uh, most active last year as well, even with the surgery. Um, but yeah, game plan is get back on the mats, and then I'll see you guys in August in uh, in Nashville. I uh, I've also had a labrum tear, so anytime somebody talks about it, yeah. I know the, the recovery process on that. So I'm very very happy to see you make your way back to the mats because you are a gym. Like seriously, I, anytime there's a blue belt out there that's subbing guys, the way that you're subbing them, I mean, our eyes are on you, you Thank know. You. And it's just a matter of time before you break through. Now, leaving this qualifier here, what are you what are you going to work on? You talked about the back escapes and back control. Mm -hmm the turtle, mm -hmm. um, but but what's your big take? Like, what are you going to be working on at the gym? Those are the big two. Um, mainly, all of my training room sessions, I'm pretty much working on uh, sweeping, getting on top, and a lot of uh, wrestling, hand fighting, defensive wrestling, so that way I can get ready for, uh, for the trials coming up. Uh, either West Coast or East Coast. I'm not sure which one I'll probably hop in. I, I'm probably going to wait till uh, next year, hop in the West Coast ones, uh, finish out this year, uh, get as many competitions, as many reps with elite guys as I can, or at least high-level guys in the area. And then, uh, but yeah, I'm going to be working a lot of smash passing, a lot of our body lock su stuff from uh, Sean, a lot of wrestling, a lot of takedowns. Uh, I kind of mentioned it uh, <laughs> to uh, somebody over there after the first match. I kind of forgot who I was. I let uh, Maximus get the guard pull first. I, I really wanted to come out and show a little bit of my wrestling that I've been working on. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on a good path. I, I think I'll, I'll end up doing really well. Oh, okay. Well, he's, you're officially invited. You don't gotta. You don't gotta do another qualifier. So, I appreciate that. But I want that title. I, I, I've been wanting to win one of these qualifiers. Uh, it's one of the things that I, I really like to hang my hat on. I really enjoyed the PGF uh, from the very first time I saw it. I competed on the undercard for yeah. the 170, and uh, I remember uh, right after that tournament, uh, I remember BMAC talking to my boy Freddie, and he was like, "Hey, we're gonna collab for this next one." And uh, Freddie gave me the little insight that it was gonna be 155. So that was when. The, the cut started. So. <laughs> well, so thankfully I don't have to do that anymore. We saw you make some brutal cuts um, to make to try and do those 155 qualifiers. You got invited last season, obviously with the AC labrum joint. You weren't able to do it. Yeah. Every year, my favorite competitors are the young guys, the, the blue and purple belts. And every year there's a blue belt that makes a name for himself. I can think of every season yeah. from Randy Road into last season it was Nick Saff. I mean, Nick getting that – beautiful submission over yeah. Reese Lafitte. I mean, Reese is becoming one of the best guys in the yeah. country, and a blue belt got to fit and tapped him in PGF. And you could be that guy. Yeah. There's always that blue belt dark horse. Well, I got a, I got a lot of inspiration from Kevin Buring that first season, that 170 season. I was like, man, if this kid can do it, like, I, kn I know I have confidence yeah, in myself and, and my coach. A couple of weeks ago, he just beat a really tough uh, black belt out of the Atlanta area. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, the PGF to me is – highlights the best blue belts because here's the thing what i also love about it 
Maybe as a blue belt, you go and you have a, a, a match against black belt, lose first day, now you're done. ADCC trials, you're done. You only get one shot. But if you get ten more chances, you're going to make a highlight. A guy oh, like yeah. you is going to get a big win, and I think you're going to do that next season. Huge congrats. I appreciate that. And very happy that you're healthy. And get after it, brother. you got big things coming your way. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. All the love that you guys have given me. BMAC for putting this on. You guys are incredible. I, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys really made this journey very fun. Well, there we go. Season 5 competitor. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
uh, that's that's uh, I, I, I met him at the at the last qualifier and didn't do quite good either. Um, uh, but I will definitely uh, be working on him. I'm, I'm going to study some tape on him, and well, I have been, and um, definitely handsome Kevin. I think he's a great guy, but I definitely want to make. I, I want to, you know, I'm not the most pretty person in the world, all right. <laughs> But I want for I want to do it for all the ugly people out there. You know, <laughs> we're not all handsome. We're not all Kevin. Okay. But we can be Sawyer. You know what I mean. Okay, I hear you. For all the Sawyers out there, you want to take out the Kevins. For sure. I mean, I hear you. Well, Sawyer, um, again, phenomenal day today. Your jujitsu looked incredible. I think you're gonna be a star. Like if you get the PGF invite, mm -hmm. you're gonna be a star. People are going to really love watching you compete. And I think that's what's really important. You could go out there and win every single match, but if you're boring and nobody likes watching it, who cares? Mm -hmm. But you're the type of guy, win or lose, I want to watch. Thank you. So I'm a fan. I, again, some of the best PGF performances I've seen. Thank you. Thank you. So, my man. There's Sawyer Griffin, finalist today. But I'm going to be joined by the old rock troll here, one of my favorite guys in PGF history. A guy that I'm a big fan of. I'm a big, big fan of Maximus Jolly, and I'm being joined by him today. It seems like every time you're here, you're jumping on the mic because you're doing good. Pull that mic down a little bit. There, there, oh, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah, that's what Brandon told me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just making sure. But Scaff, look. Jeff, what did you think of that performance? I, I got to say, every time you're here, you're sitting next to me because you're yep. doing so well. What is it about the PGF that, um, that brings out the best in you? I mean, honestly, uh, you're a well, star. Well, that's what's been in my reach for opportunities, and I'm starting to step it up some, you know. I started from somewhere. Of course, I'm going to begin somewhere, and it starts with the gym. Steel, sharpen, sharpen steel. Mm -hmm. No, I hear you. I mean, so talk about those guys up there you're training with, because every time we see you, you look a little sharper and sharper. What have you been working on a lot if you want to devolve? You know, you might want to keep it secret because you're going to be in season yeah. five. Are you going to try and bulk up a little bit? Because you were the smallest guy here today, but it didn't matter. Well, um, I think my training, uh, use Calatera as an example. He's really small, and he'll beat anybody, you know. I hear you. And uh, I just want to say, uh, David Evers, time to get out of retirement, boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So, David Evers, that's yeah, the match he, you want. Yeah, and uh, he, he was the smallest guy. He uh, won the whole thing, you know. I think uh, – uh, my father told me he played a big role in my jiu-jitsu, you know. When I was 12, I, uh, that's when I started. And if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have found my passion, you know, and purpose in life, you know. And it's become an addiction jiu-jitsu has, you know. It's very fun. So what is your purpose? Is it is it breaking people? <laughs> it's uh, submissions, and, and it's just fun, you know. It's so, satisfying. So when you hit a submission, like, what's that feeling like to you? Does it feel like, are, like, are you, how do you think about jiu-jitsu? I think jiu-jitsu is, I just enjoy it. It's a, it can be a martial art, and it's for sports, you know, sports jiu-jitsu. And, I mean, it's growing, you know, not like it was before. Now it's uh, broadcasted to everywhere on TV and MMA, and now more and more people are starting to get into it. I feel I was, I was, uh, I got into it before the revolution, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I do. And that gave me an advantage. I have an edge because I know the old and the new, you know. You, okay, and I the, mean, I hear and you. And uh, uh, get back to what I was saying before with the uh, how it feels to get a submission. Just to simplify it, simplify it feels good, you know, to get a submission. It's like a dopamine rush. I, I mean, I hear you, dude. You you get a lot of those dopamine rushes whenever yeah. you're on the map. But I got look look at this. We have Hunter Colvin and Elijah Carlton. Like those are the two best guys in PGF. Just history. consider me a techni technical technician, a submission hunter. You're right underneath those guys, like with Carlton. Right underneath those guys. The Do bad they just guy? have a little bit more? But your record, like last season, your only loss was to Dane Leak, and that was an overtime loss, and yeah. it was razor thin. But you really brought it to him during that regulation of the match. I think uh, two qualifiers, okay. all submissions, just running through people. Like, yeah. you're really becoming a legend on these PGF mats. Yeah, it feels good. I'm the PGF champ for uh, – qualifier champ for Chattanooga. Yeah, and now Decatur. So, here's the thing. And Decatur. How do I beat you? How does somebody beat you? Like, what are these guys going to have to do? Well, I could tell t 
tell you one, and uh, it still won't help. Okay. Okay. Uh, put pressure. Apply pressure. The uh, mistake that uh, – talk to me more about uh, Sawyer. Yeah, so – His so, mistakes, you know. Okay, so first match with Sawyer, right? Yeah. Really – He rushed, you know. I feel like he kind of rushed. And he's a solid grappler. I can I, I can say that and mean it because he has beat me before. Yes. At the Wetumpka Rumble by the River Invitational. What did that loss mean to you? Like when you lost to Sawyer, I, how long <laughs> has that eaten at you? <laughs> 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 oh, I, I got under your skin. I can I can feel it. No, I just think it's funny, dude. <laughs> How Brand, uh, Brandon came up to me and was all friendly about it. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, yeah. The funny thing was he got me with a choke. Uh, uh, not to make mis- excuses, but I think I'm going to have to make one. I came short notice, but if, brother, I'm not ready, I don't care. If I'm not ready for a tournament... I'm still going to go, you know. To be honest, I wasn't really ready for this one. You know, I haven't doing the endurance training that I should, but my technique was up there, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sawyer was pushing the pace, you know. And uh, I, ca- I came in with a different strategy against him. Now, let's talk about my mistake from last time. Okay. We're 2-1 uh, and one now. Yeah. Actually, 1-1. One and one. Yeah, 2-1 and because so, I faced so, him twice. So I know – that last time you made a mistake in the wrestling. Like you stood, like he ended up taking your back off a wrestling exchange. So this time you no, pulled guard. No, not from the wrestling. I actually did a go-go clinch. So where they have side control. Okay. He was heavy. Instead of just, a, a, first of all, he should have muscled out of any bad position. But I tried to sweep him out of it, do some, something funky and uh, out of the contrary. And I, I uh, paid for it. Okay. Backfired. And he took your back, yep. finished you. But today... And that's when my cardio was worse than it was now. Okay. You know, my cardio is a, uh, you can have good cardio and lose it. Do you agree with that? For sure. Happens all the time. Like uh, my first match, you heard me breathing hard. I'm going to talk about uh, Carson. Um, he was uh, defending that choke really hard, you know. And uh, he defended the back uh, that pretty impressively, you know. How he'd go to the side, you know. That, uh. That's pretty good. Well, here's my last question for you because we got to wrap this bad boy up. Real quick. Okay. Uh, don't forget about your mother's. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. Okay. My Mother's Day gift was winning the uh, Decatur qualifier for season five of PGF. Oh. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Oh, Maximus. <laughs> the old rock troll yeah. has a beautiful heart. <laughs> Final Actually, message for your competitor. I'm also Maximus Prime. I was Maximus Prime before. The rock troll. Okay, well, Maximus Prime here. Yes. All right. Don't forget. I won't. All right. Here's Get out the paper and write Maximus Prime over <laughs> and over again. All right. Hey, wait, wait. I'm I'm rock troll in the season. All right. Yeah. Right now, Maximus Prime. Okay. So Max. So okay. I know I get to just make up the rules. All right. Okay. I mean, you're a legend in the PGF. So I, much as. You know, Madonna goes by Madonna. If you want to go by Maximus Prime, you're Maximus Prime until the season, then you're Rock Troll. But I just don't want to – I just can't wait to identify as something else. <laughs> okay. That's how <laughs> – <laughs> uh, Last thing, all right. I just need a message for Season 5 competitors. Yeah, I was joking about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> season 5, message for the competitors. Then we're cutting this thing. All right. What do you got to say to your competitors, Season 5? What I have to say to my competitors for Season 5 – I guess there's so much to say. You're going to have to give me a uh, few seconds, you know, because I take this seriously, you know. Okay. I don't care if you settle. I don't care if you don't. The results are going to be the same. Don't make the same mistake that David Evers did. Hear about me and then just hide behind a shadow. You gotta come out of retirement, man. You can't have a, re- you can't be replaced, cause that's what's going on right now. I'm your same size, and uh, I'm gonna be the, the honey badger that defeats the elephant. So. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> there it is. We have the Decatur qualifier wrapped up. Our champion, my man. I'm a huge fan of Maximus Jolly. You are incredible today. Thank you. That's it, guys.